Ever wondered what happened to The Sopranos cast after the show ended? Some got into serious legal trouble, others vanished from acting, and a few skyrocketed to unexpected fame. And yes, tragically, some have passed away. Stick around for shocking cameos and personal secrets that you haven't heard before. This is part three of our series, so if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the time to do so. Let's talk about Michael Rispoli, the guy who brought the unforgettable Jackie April Sr. to life. Rispoli made his film debut in Household Saints as Nicky Falconetti, a soldier struggling to adjust to civilian life after the war. He followed this up with a strong performance in Angie, alongside Gina Davis. But let's not forget his work on The Sopranos. As Jackie, he was the original boss whose death set off a chain of events that shaped the entire show. Many fans are still wondering what would have happened if Jackie had survived and continued to run The Soprano family. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments. Off screen, Michael has been married to Madeline Crawford since 1993, and they have three children. When he's not playing tough guys, he's a family man. You've also seen him in movies like Rounders, Summer of Sam, Pain and Gain, and shows like The Offer, Billions, and Godfather of Harlem. The kids with that truck, they make restitution to Junior. Done. Let's talk about John Bianco, a true Brooklyn native and a guy who brings that authentic New York vibe to every role he plays. With his sister Donna Bianco being a decorated NYPD sergeant, John's got some serious law enforcement knowledge in his blood. He honed his acting chops at prestigious NYC schools like HB Studios, mastering the Meisner technique. He also dipped his toes into directing, editing, and cinematography at Film Video Arts, but acting has always been his first love. You probably know John best as Jerry Torciano from The Sopranos. Beyond the Sopranos, Bianco's talent has landed him recurring roles on popular TV shows like Law and & Order, Daredevil, and Gotham. He's also set to appear as Petey Pepsid, a capo in the Guardo crime family, in the new spinoff of Law and & Order, Organized Crime. On the big screen, Bianco's credits include The Irishman, The Brooklyn Banker, Friends and Romans, and The Clean, starring Adrian Brody. John Bianco also directed TV specials and shows, including Black Athletes, Fact and Fiction, and Memory... Remember Patty, the striking blonde actress who brought the fierce lady Shylock Lorraine Caluso? Patty's journey began in quite a unique way. Andy Warhol discovered her while she was a teen DJ and cast her in his underground film Flesh. Not a bad start, right? At just 16, she took her career to France and appeared in films like La Maison and The Crazy American Girl. Back in the States, Patty kept busy with roles in Rancho Deluxe, Time After Time, and the main event where she played Ryan O'Neill's girlfriend. She also appeared in Modern Problems and Real Genius, but her most intense role was portraying Kathy Evelyn Smith, Belushi's candy girl, in Wired. Her personal life? Equally fascinating. In the late 60s, while modeling in London, she dated singer Cat Stevens. Patty also had a relationship with Don Johnson from, and they have a son. She's been married three times, spending a decade in France and becoming fluent in French. Now 73 years old, Patty is half retired from acting, having had small roles in TV shows like Sinner and Billions over the past few years. Hey Sopranos fans, let's dive into the life of Frank Albanese, the man who traded his boxing gloves for the limelight after a brain injury forced him out of the ring. Picture this, it's 1968, and Albanese scores his first role in the mob drama, The Brotherhood. It was a small part, but it kick-started his four-decade-long career in mafia-themed films. Here's the juicy part for Sopranos aficionados. Albanese had roles in both The Godfather and The Godfather Part 3 as two different characters. He fondly recalled, In The Godfather, I was the hitman who burst into the room and shot the guy and girl in bed. And in The Godfather 3, I was the Grand Marshal leading the parade before a big shootout. It was wild! Albanese also made his mark in the legendary Goodfellas. Playing Henry Hill's crooked lawyer, he flashed one of the widest grins on screen. Of course, we can't forget his role on The Sopranos. As Uncle Pat, he owned a farm where, let's say, Tony's crew buried some of their problems. Frank Albanese left a lasting legacy when he passed away there on October 5th, 2015, from prostate cancer. Hey, Sopranos fans, today we're talking about Robert Patrick, the man who gave us the unforgettable T-1000 in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. You'd think playing a liquid metal killing machine would make an actor stick to one type of role, but Patrick took a different route. After scaring the pants off everyone in Terminator 2, he jumped into everything from low-budget thrillers like The Cool Surface to heavyweight films like Copland with De Niro and Stallone. 
And let's not forget his TV gigs. He nailed it as Davey Scatino, the down-on-his-luck gambler in The Sopranos, and as Agent Doggett in The X-Files. Patrick also teamed up with Eastwood for Flags of Our Fathers and George Clooney in The Men Who Stare at Goats. This guy has worked with some serious talent and built a rep as one of the most dedicated actors out there. On the personal side, Patrick married actress Barbara Hooper in 1990, and they've got two kids. In a candid moment, he revealed he struggled with substance abuse early in his career. Lately, you've seen Robert in shows like 1923, Reacher, Goliath, The Walking Dead, and movies like Honest Thief. Kids go to the same school together. <laughs> now let's talk about Chris Caldavino, the man behind Billy Leotardo. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Chris started his acting journey at the Gene Frankel Theater in NYC. In 2004, Chris landed the role of Billy Leotardo on The Sopranos. Whatever happened there? Chris's career didn't stop there. He snagged roles in various TV shows and films, including The Good Guys and Brooklyn Rules. He even worked with Martin Scorsese in the Oscar-nominated The Wolf of Wall Street. On HBO's Boardwalk Empire, Chris played Tonino Sandrelli for three seasons earning a SAG nomination. More recently, Chris has been busy with guest roles on popular shows like Castle, The Haves and the Have-Nots, and Tommy. He also appeared in the mob comedy Made in Chinatown, featuring several Sopranos alumni. Fans of American Horror Story might recognize him from season 10, and he's now a recurring guest star on the hit series Tulsa King. 47. He was a f kid. Remember the fascinating Oksana Lada, who you might remember as Arena Tony Soprano's needy mistress? Born in Ukraine, Oksana originally studied to be an economist before moving to the U.S. at 20. With her striking Slavic looks, she first dipped her toes into modeling. But soon, the acting bug bit her. After studying drama in both Ukraine and the U.S., she found her way onto our screens as Arena on The Sopranos. And let's be real, her character brought a whole new level of drama to Tony's life, didn't she? If you think juggling mob business is tough, try adding a demanding mistress into the mix. But Oksana's talents don't stop there. She's fluent in four languages, English, Ukrainian, Russian, and Polish. She also made waves in New York theater, receiving praise for her roles. And if you're a fan of Orange is the New Black, you might have spotted her as Yulia. She even made a memorable appearance on 30 Rock as a wedding dress saleswoman. Plus, she was one of Hollywood's few at Donald Trump's inauguration ball, alongside Caitlyn Jenner. What you want me to do? Tony, please. I miss you so much. Will Janowitz has a fascinating background. His parents, Catherine from Slovakia and James from Germany, both fled Europe during World War II. Growing up on the Upper West Side, Will honed his acting chops at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. Before landing his role on The Sopranos, Will worked briefly as Mary Louise Parker's personal assistant. He kicked off his acting career with a small part in George Washington. His portrayal of Finn on The Sopranos, though, remains a fan favorite, embodying the humor and horror of stumbling into a crime family. Beyond The Sopranos, Will's career includes indie films like Backseat and voice work in Grand Theft Auto Liberty City stories. In 2009, he joined Ang Lee's Taking Woodstock, donning a blonde wig and mustache to play Chip Monk. He even took on historical figures, portraying Leo Frank in The People v. Leo Frank. Will's versatility continued with roles in Mad Men, Louie, and Boardwalk Empire, where he played the infamous Jaime Weiss. He also appeared in films like H and TV series like Gotham. Vito was blowing the security guard. Son of a b Remember Frank John Hughes, who played Walden Vinyl season of our favorite show? Born in the Bronx, Hughes got his big break as Wild Bill Garner in Band of Brothers. But before making it big, Hughes studied jazz composition at Berkeley and even had his poetry published in the New York Quarterly. When he wasn't moving furniture to support his family, he was building his acting chops in films like Lonely in America and TV shows like Players with Ice-T. Hughes then became a staple in crime dramas, landing recurring roles in 24 and, of course, The Sopranos. In 2011, Hughes co-wrote and starred in Leave, followed by writing The Dark Tourist in 2012. His script, Pox Americana, made it to the prestigious Blacklist in 2013. Recently, Hughes played Frank Sinatra in The Offer and is set to appear in Pep, produced by Leonardo DiCaprio's Appian Way. Pick him up. You pick him up. Let's talk about the life and career of Paul Herman, the guy who brought Beansy to life on The Sopranos. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Herman started acting a bit later than most, with his first screen roles coming in his mid-30s. You might recognize Herman from his roles in big hits like Once Upon a Time in America, Heat, and American Hustle. He had this knack for popping up in movies with Robert De Niro, from Goodfellas and The Irishman to Silver Linings Playbook. Aside from The Sopranos, Herman also appeared in another HBO hit, Entourage, playing Marvin Vincent Chase's accountant. Herman's career wasn't just limited to the screen. 
In the 90s, he and his brother Charlie ran the Columbus Cafe, a popular spot across from Lincoln Center frequented by actors, ballet dancers, and yes, even wise guys. Paul passed away on March 29, 2022, at the age of 76, leaving behind a legacy of memorable roles and a career that brought a slice of New York life to screens big and small. If you Parmesan sandwich, f you. Let's explore the journey of Vitaly Baganov, who you might recall as Valerie the Russian from The Sopranos. Born in St. Petersburg, Baganov initially pursued a career in astronomy. But after four years of stargazing, he decided to switch focus. Four years later, he emerged with an acting degree. He then ventured into Soviet cinema before making the bold move to the United States in 1991. In the U.S., his distinctive presence quickly found its niche. On The Sopranos, Baganov's portrayal of the Russian in episodes like Pine Barrens and To Save Us All From Satan's Power was nothing short of memorable. His role as the diehard Valerie, who finds himself entangled in the chaotic fallout from a botched hit, showcased his ability to add depth to his characters with a unique blend of menace and charm. Baganov's talents extend beyond the world of TV. He also appeared in Salt. In this film, Baganov took on the role of a Russian president. In addition to his work on The Sopranos and Salt, Baganov voiced Ray Bulgarin in GTA 4. Guy was an interior decorator. His house looked like shit. You might remember Tim Daly, though he's more widely recognized for his role as Joe Hackett in the long-running sitcom Wings, Daly has had quite an eclectic career. Born into an acting dynasty, Tim was practically destined for the stage. Before he was making audiences laugh as the straight-laced Joe Hackett, Daly's career had a rocky start. He broke out in Barry Levinson's debut film Diner, but then found himself in a slew of TV movies and less-than-memorable series. But Wings gave him the breakthrough he needed, setting the stage for more TV roles and notable guest appearances. While Daly made a name for himself on television, he's had some notable moments on the big screen as well, with roles in The Object of My Affection and Basic. Despite these efforts, TV remained his stronghold. His role in The Sopranos was a memorable highlight. Despite a high-profile marriage to actress Amy Van Nostrand, which ended in divorce, Daly's personal life has been just as eventful. He even climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in 2012. It's a f***ing Emmy! If you're the Sopranos fan, you probably remember Joe Santos as Angelo Garipi. But did you know his journey to Hollywood stardom was anything but typical? Joe's early life was marked by hardship and a slew of blue-collar jobs. After a stint in the military and a brief semi-pro football career, Santos decided to pursue drama. He started with small roles in TV and film, like The Obscure Naked City and a few of his cousin Joseph W. Sarno's films. His big break came with Panic in Needle Park, thanks to a push from his friend Al Pacino. From there, Joe landed roles in several gritty 70s crime dramas and TV shows, including a memorable turn as Lieutenant Dennis Becker on The Rockford Files. The 80s saw him in lighter fare, with roles as a divorced dad in Me and Max and Paul Rodriguez's father in AKA Pablo. Despite his prolific TV work, it was his role in The Sopranos that brought him a new wave of recognition. Joe Santos passed away on March 18th, 2016, at the age of 84. Get out! Get out! <laughs> you might remember Nick Ahmed Tarabay as Matouche, a gritty pusher who added a distinct edge to the show from 2001 to 2004. While Matouche wasn't the central character, his role certainly enriched the series. After high school, Tarabay made his way to New York. There, he balanced working as a high-end clothing salesman for brands like Hugo Boss and Gucci with acting studies at T. Schreiber Studio. He also performed in off-Broadway productions, laying the groundwork for his future career. By 2004, he was off to Los Angeles, where he trained under Larry Moss and made his mark in Danny and the Deep Blue Sea. So what happened next? Tarabay's career gained significant traction with standout roles. He played Asher in Spartacus, a scheming gladiator, and took on a Klingon officer role in Star Trek Into Darkness. Fans of superhero series will recognize him as Captain Boomerang in Arrow. His versatility also shines through in Burn Notice, The Expanse, and even in the video game Anthem. Most recently, he's brought the villain Eclipso to life in Stargirl. Can you give me the thing? Subscribe to Vano VHS and hit the notification bell. Meanwhile, check out our video on what really happened to Tony Soprano in the last episode, or find out who's the best boss, capo, soldier, and associate in The Sopranos. Don't miss out.